everybody to you to our first RTO on Zoom in the month of July 2020. Hallelujah! I'm so happy to be back and thank you again, Mark, for that great teaching on Peter, how Peter got called by Jesus himself. Amen. I was going to pray with you tonight with fresh passion and fervency, a radical prayer of lament for America and the church to see Psalm 133 become a reality during these times of civil, cultural war and crisis that I've been writing and editing for weeks with the help of others. However, I sense that it was not time yet as we continue to edit it and wrestle with this critical and deep lament, because we have to be lamenting for America today. We have to be deep lamenting for the church in America today. So I want to give you a taste of Psalm 133 at the beginning of this message. Here it is. Listen carefully and listen prayerfully. Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren, for brethren, like we're doing tonight, to dwell together in kinonia, in unity. It is like the precious oil to refresh us upon the head, upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, the priest, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. I met Barbara in that mountain 31 years ago on July 13th. For there, the Lord commanded the blessing. What is that? Life. For how long? Forever. Forevermore, the Bible says. So, here is our ongoing series that we've been teaching the last few weeks. Praying with Peter. Here is our title for tonight. This is a very important message. Very critical message for such a time like this because I want to speak with with much relevancy to what we're facing in America, the living Word of God. So the Word of God is an essential voice of truth. Why? Because many are believing lies. The Word of God is delicious and nutritious bread. Why? Because many are anemic. It is refreshing water because many are dehydrated. It is our clear guy. Why? Because many are lost, disoriented, and hopeless. It is our glue to keep us together, as we just heard from Psalm 133, because many are disintegrating. It is our shining light. Why? Because many are in darkness. We just heard this morning, a young lady that we know that threw herself in the front of a train. Mm. Hence, we are seeing many unnecessary casualties. In other words, Christians must realize that we cannot function without the Word of God and without praying the Word of God. Hence, with due humility, one minnow with money meal daily for your benefit, for our joy, as we make our Father happier. The Word of God is essential, which means we cannot do without. The Word is our very sustenance for life, our guide, and the light to our path to navigate triumphantly, not just somehow, but triumphantly with discernment, assurance, and correctly, so we will not crash, get lost, nor stumble. The Word of God will keep us together and liberate us 
with the freedom of truth to believe right. Believe right. Many, many people are believing, but they're believing wrong. They are being deceived. So we can live right. Especially during this confusing and fearful time for so many. Many are now reaching the point of despair. The word of God has unlimited, I know, unlimited and explosive transformative power. Here is a biblical text for tonight. Go back to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 and 25, which amazingly reflects Psalm 133. Listen to it again. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, the truth through the spirit, through the spirit, in sincere love for the brethren, love one another fervently with fire, with passion, boiling with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever, because all Flash is as grass, and all the glory of men as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away. But, hallelujah, the word of the Lord endureth forever. Now, this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. Hallelujah. Here is what Peter wants us to know tonight. The glory of men is very temporary not sustainable, and it does not last. It comes and it goes fast. It's like vapor. It just <laughs> blows. And we don't see it again. You see it now, but now you don't. Peter says in verse 24, all the glory of men as the flower of the grass, but the word of God lives endures and abides forever because it is incorruptible. The word does not have an expiration date. Hallelujah for that. In other words, the word of God is Jesus Christ himself. The apostle John reminds us, the word is eternal, explosive, dynamite, magnetic, and dynamic. The word is transformative and redemptive. I know. The word of God is alive, all powerful, all sufficient, all comforting, all satisfying, all inerrant, all truth, all infallible, all authoritative, all inspired, all delicious. Uh, much more than Cuban food. Hallelujah. Jesus is the bread of life. My friend, Dr. John Piper, that we took to Angola, Louisiana, told my friends there that Jesus did not only come to give us bread, which he has, but he came to be the bread of life for now and forever. He told that to the guys. I still remember that. Hallelujah. Peter is saying at the end of verse 25, that the explosive and transformative loving gospel of hope is embedded, embedded in the word of God. We cannot keep giving people a self-made gospel. We have to give people the gospel that flows out of the word of God. Moses commands us at the end of his final speech, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 that he gave to all of Israel to make the word of God our very life, life, so we can live in freedom every day. Take a careful listen to the writer to the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, who tells us with certainty, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, 
piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner, we need that today, of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Peter also wants us to know that no one can resist the word of God. The word of God, say it with me, is irresistible. Irresistible. Peter also wants us to know that the word of God can save anyone, anyone, I know, anyone from the justifiable wrath of God. <laughs> the Father, God the Father, regardless of the gravity and the frequency of their sin. You see, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter, me, so many others, so many of you, and especially my mentor and friend, the late Charles W. Colson, the Hatcherman, who cut lots of people's legs when he became President Richard Nixon's chief counsel at the young age of 34. Could you imagine? I want to give you now real hope. I want to give you now real hope for you to take to the bank and cash the check. And I guarantee you, it will not have insufficient funds. Here it is. Joe Colson also did lots of evil things. Joe Colson was an evil man. He was an evil man. Many things they did in the dark. But yet he could not hide from the clear and sharp eye of God Almighty, our Father, nor escape the arrest, the arrest by the Lord Jesus, nor the invasion of grace from the Word of God, which all powerful, which is all powerful, redemptive, and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and it's a discerner, we just read, read that, of the thoughts and intents of the heart, wow, we cannot hide from the Word of God. We are naked before the Word of God. Listen, Colson's superb intelligence, amazing education, a Marine captain, like our son Howard is now. Human power and satanic influence was not able to resist the power of the word of God. Chuck was a rebel. Martin Luther said that one word from the word of God will make the devil and demons tremble. And indeed, he and his demons will have to flee. Take a listen to Matthew 8, 31 to 32. Listen to real power. <laughs> Not human power that like, like we see now with all those people. No, 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 no. Real power. Listen to the word of God. So the demons beg him. They beg Jesus. The demons have to recognize that you're a Christian. <laughs> Remember? Uh, uh, they told Paul, I know who you are. I don't know who they are, but I know who you are, Paul. And the demons and the devil have to recognize that the Holy Spirit is living in you. And when they do, they will leave you alone. So the demons beg him, Jesus, saying, hey, if you cast us out, permit us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said to them, go. So when they had come out, they went into the herd of swine. And suddenly, listen to this. And suddenly, the whole herd of swine ran violently. They became violent. Down the steep place into the sea and perished into the water. We must believe in demon possession and in demon oppression. Demons are real. And this country, many people in this country are now being led by demons. Now, I'm giving you a tough message, so I want to give a little bit of a, of a humor right now. 
to make you laugh. Hey folks, that is the trademark and the beginning of devil's ham. The devil went into the pigs. That's the beginning of devil's ham. Listen to the eternal effect and explosive impact of the word of God in Joel Colson. Through the faith that that's why we have to be faithful to the word of God. Don't deviate. Don't try to water it down. No, 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 no. Give them the unadulterated word of God. That's what people need today. That's why we do one minute with money mail. You're simply the word of God. Don't give your thought. Don't give your opinion. Give them the powerful word of God. Here it is. To the faithfulness of your cousin friend, Tan Phillips, who God our Father used to proclaim the word of God to Chuck. God used Tan Phillips to proclaim the word of God to a very powerful man, he thought, Chuck Colson, as a credible witness for Christ Jesus, which the Holy Spirit used for Chuck Colson to experience his permanent, one time, born again experience in the midst of the Watergate scandal, fiasco, and crisis. Watergate was a big crisis in America. Never, and, and Chuck Colson never went back to Egypt, meaning he never went back to the old lifestyle that he used to live. Chuck Colson became a true Christian. Chuck Colson wrote about it in his first and best-selling book, Born Again, in chapter eight, title, An Unforgettable Night. Listen carefully. I want to encourage you tonight about the power of the word of God. The power of the word of God. If there was anybody far from the father was Charles W. Colson. He did not believe in anybody but in himself and in his own power. But God was about to change that. Page 115, I quote, Joe Coulson wrote as he was in deep distress and confusion. Tan reached for his Bible and read a few of his favorite Psalms. That's why we go into the Psalms in one minute with Manny Mel. The comforting words like a cold, soothing ointment. Once again, Psalm 133. And he kept saying to Chuck from the Word of God, Trust in the Lord. That's exactly the theme of First Peter. Trust and obey. Trust in the Lord. I remember time reading, Chuck Coulson said, and I wanted it to, right that moment, I wanted to, Chuck Coulson said, if only I knew how. If only I could be sure. That was what Chuck Coulson was asking. Then Tom asked Chuck, would you like to pray together? as he was closing his Bible and putting it on the table beside him. Let me tell you, because I knew Chuck Colson very well, that Colson's heart was as hard as cement. He was not a tender man, he told me. No soft, no compassionate. Chuck Colson never cried. Chuck Colson was a stoic man. But listen now carefully to the dramatic reversal, heart transplant, and real. You, you know when you are born again, there is a complete reversal. Heart transplant and real new birth gospel experience Colson had with a radical infusion of permanent living hope, faith, and confidence in Christ. In pages 156 and 157, of, of born again, Chuck wrote, I quote, as I drove out of Tam's driveway, the tears, the tears were flowing uncontrollably. There were no street lights, no moonlight. The car headlights were flooding illumination before my eyes, but I was crying so hard. I remember that because I, I wept like a baby and I never cried either. Ask Barbara, I am not a crying baby. I have cried with my wife very few times. 
uh, I just don't fake it. I don't want, I cry when I have to, when I really have to. This is the time to be crying for America and weeping for America and for the church in America because we are very silent. We need to begin to speak up truth from the word of God. But he says, I was crying so hard. It was like trying to swim on the water. I pulled to the side of the road, not more than a hundred yards from the entrance to Tom's driveway, he says. The tires sinking into the soft mounds of pine needles. Coulson goes on to say, I forgot about machismo. Mm about pretenses or speak to us holy spirit about fears of being weak <laughs> and as i did i began to experience a wonderful feeling of being released that's what happens when you are born again that happened to me in venezuela when i became a born again christian then came the strange sensation the water was not only running down my cheeks, remember Psalm 133, but surging through my whole body, hallelujah, as well, cleansing and cooling as it went. That's the gospel impact. That's the reversal. There were not tears of sadness or, and remorse, nor of joy, but somehow, Tears of relief. Wow. Tears of relief. We need to cry to experience tears of relief. That's what a born again Christian experiences. And then your cousin said, I pray my first real prayer. God, I don't know how to find you, <laughs> but I'm going to try, he said. I'm not. I'm not much the way I am now, but somehow I want to give myself to you, Chuck Coulson said. I did not know how to say more, so I repeated over and over the words, take me, Lord, take me, Lord, take me, Lord. Coulson became a baby in Christ. What a beautiful thing. Job Coulson became a baby, a born again Christian in Christ. Everybody has to come to the Father as a baby, knowing nothing. He was born again, hallelujah, and don't we glad. Coulson continues to write, I stay there in the car, wet eye, praying, hallelujah, thinking, and perhaps for perhaps about a half an hour, maybe longer, along in the quiet of the dark night. That's a good place to be. Yet for the first time in my life, I was not alone at all. Wow, what an evidence of what a born again Christian looks like. You see, we're getting a little glimpse here to be able to examine ourselves and to see, am I a Christian? Am I a born again Christian? Am I living by tradition? Or have I really experienced the power of the gospel that flows like dynamite out of the word of God? Job Coulson lived for the devil for almost 40 years as he embraced him as his father. Job Coulson embraced the devil as his father. I did too. And then he lived for Christ for the last 40 years of his life, empowered by the word of God and the spirit of God that not only saved him, but sustained him to levels of joy and empowered him to become a last modern prophet. Job Coulson was a last modern prophet. And a life that was well lived. Job Coulson finished well. I went to his funeral. I went to his memorial service. I was speaking in Kampala, Uganda with Barbara. And we came back. We were in Kampala, Uganda, speaking at a prison with 10,000 inmates. And we came back for the funeral in Washington, D.C. at the cathedral. We were there. 
God the Father became then his first, his permanent loving father. God the Father became his permanent loving father. We desperately need a few more at your closer today. Don't you think so? So, Father, I'm praying now, raise them up for such a time like this. With a steady hand, with a steady voice, always pointing people to the word of God. Breaking, breaking point on the radio. He also found the prison fellowship, as you know. And I went to school of Wheaton because of John Colson. And my friends, Dick Chase and Ken Westner, who helped me get in there because I didn't qualify. Colson maximized those last 40 years above and beyond anyone I know. I know many people, but I don't know anybody that had maximized 40 years of a born again Christian life as John Colson did. He did not waste a minute. He wrote over 30 books and he took the time to write me <laughs> dozens of notes and dozens of letters. He even took the time to call me and to call Barbara. Joe Cotton spoke at our annual fundraiser, 1,400 people, a banquet in 2004. I'm still waiting for the bill. He didn't judge me for his airline ticket, no for his hotel, no his food, no his fee. I'm still waiting for the bill. Amazing. He went hard after Christ. He never looked back. His legacy will be forever remembered. His impact is eternal. I am one of those he impacted with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am a satisfied customer of Jesus, hallelujah, who is the word of God. And John Colson contributed to my growth and development in Christ Jesus in many ways and on many different levels. He called me his living monument and he also told me to keep my post and to do my duty. Listen, Peter is saying to us that the word of God contains in it the unlimited, explosive, magnetic, all sufficient, all satisfying, and all powerful grace of God the Father that Jesus Christ purchased on the cross with his redemptive blood, hallelujah, for our benefit and for our blessing. Remember, Jesus is also our older brother, and God the Father is not a respected of persons. God the Father loves us as his children, if we are, as much as he loved Jesus because he wants us all to be with him and Jesus forever. That's our destination. That's our hope. That's glorious, isn't it? No more COVID-19 in heaven. No more civil unrest in heaven. That grace, Peter says, by his own experience, not only saves a wicked sinner like, like Joe Colson with a new birth experience, but also sustains that redeemed sinner to new levels of joy, like, like he did with Colson and me and so many others, and the Apostle Paul and the, and the Apostle Peter. That grace also breaks through through the strong holes of addiction, any addictions, self, demanding possession and demanding oppression and pride, pride. Joe Colson was a very proud man. Peter is also saying that God the Father is not a respected of person. No one is outside of God the Father's reach. And grace, that's why I go to prisons and I cannot wait to get back. The ground at the cross is level and colorful. And colorful. Because Jesus purchased and saved a colorful bride from the one human race with one blood for which he's coming back to take to his honeymoon suite. He already prepared, John 14 tells us, with assurance. His grace is more than sufficient. Our father gives grace without restraint to all of his children, to anyone who would ask. Our father loves his color 
his colors. A father loves his colors equally. He created all the colors, black, white, like me, a little bit of a cafe con leche, you know, milk and coffee, yellow in between, you know, Native Americans. He, he, he loves every, every color, white, all kinds of white, you know, bland, I mean, all kinds, he, he, he loves everybody equally. He made everybody into the image of God, e -E Elohim, the Trinity, he knows. Uh, Father loves his colors he created. Look, look at the rainbow. Look at the rainbow. How many colors do you see at the rainbow? A rainbow is his permanent sign of peace and rest. After he destroyed the world and the people by water, but a people, Noah, his wife, their sons, and the, and the wives of the sons. With the great flood because of our sin that went out of control. What's happening today is that our sin is out of control. And because we are not proclaiming the gospel through the word of God, sin is rampant because the devil only listened, the demon only listen to the word of God. They, they need to see some real Christian standing up and speaking up the truth of the word of God without compromising with the world or the culture. Listen, I'm almost done. Because I want to tell you in a minute here, what was the objective of John Carson's teachings? It's coming. It's coming. Sin is out of control. Like we are seeing today, no longer is he going to destroy the world by water, but by fire. That's coming. Believe me, that's coming. And we begin to see a taste of that all over America and the world. Hence, Jesus also purchased the new heavens and the new earth to be established forever and ever after his second coming. Hallelujah. Here is what the Apostle Peter wants to do. This is now the application. Number one, make the word of God a very life and do not deviate from it. In other words, embrace the gospel. Number two, become radical and become a radical partaker of that unlimited grace that I was just talking about earlier, to experience the how much more of the Father especially now when so many are losing hope and so many are super anxious and confused, extremely fearful and so out of control with anger that hinders them and us from reasoning. We are not reasoning anymore. We cannot reason because we are out of control. Sin is showing its uglier face. Beloved, we are engaged in a civil cultural bloody war of two competing worldviews plus on top of that plus a medical crisis with the COVID-19 pandemic but Christ the living word of God along with the cross is our only precise permanent prescription that can cure us from the virus of sin that dominates and controls the human heart here it is Chuck Colson's single mission. Chuck Colson's single mission. Prison Fellowship, radio, everything that he did, his writings, every, every sermon that he gave. Let me tell you what his number one single mission was. Was to teach and transfer to the church in and out of prison. A biblical worldview. That's it. We need a biblical world view to embrace and live by that only come to the word of God. That biblical world view only comes through the word of God. Not through my opinion, not what, no, 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 no. Through the word of God. That Christian world view is being robbed from us, from, from the pulpit, from pastors who are fearful to speak up. <laughs> and we must defend it and fight for it like a good marine that Colson was for the greater Halloween of our Father. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, I simply pray this. 
that you will give us a passion and a zeal and a commitment with fervency, Father, to make a commitment right now that we're going to commit to listen, to read, to soak, to pray the word of God. Oh, Father, we want to be a living testament of your word. We want to tell people about Jesus, the fullness of glory, the fullness of truth, the fullness of grace. We want to be able to know the gospel so well, Father God, that we will rehearse it. We will preach it to ourselves 10 times a day, Father, 10 times an hour. I pray, God, that we will be compelled by the word of God, that we will be liberated, that we will fear not, that we will be men and women of courage. I pray for the God that we will now move to the left, not to the right, but we stay focused on the cross and our Christ anchor our conscious Father at the cross and in Christ. Oh, Father, give us a love for your word. The devil came to kill, steal, and destroy Christians, but Jesus came to give us life and life abundant. Jesus is the life. He gave us his life. Now, no, we didn't give our life to him. No, no, he gave us his life. We received the Holy Spirit. So, Father, we're an explosive combination. I pray, God, that we will believe it and we will live it. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Through the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening.